Hi and welcome to Terry George Smith. This is a two-part video. The first part is me and middle-aged geek girl going to Clunes in Victoria where they had a big book festival on the weekend and I'm going to show you the three cool movie books that I got while I was there and I'll tell you a little bit about the town and I'll also look at a couple of the booksellers there who are people I know. Clunes is an old gold mining town and they kind of reinvented themselves about a dozen years ago as a book town in the same way that Hay on Wye is in the UK. Yeah, on the border of Wales. Sorry, in England, on the border of Wales. I don't like saying the UK because colonizers. But Clunes is one of my favorite towns in Victoria. It's got um, public artworks. It has problems with bushfires occasionally. So they've got a big sign in the middle of the main street of the town saying bushfire place of last resort, which means that there's a catastrophic bushfire. You go to the main drag of clunes and that's where you take sanctuary the there are a lot of old colonial era buildings in clunes there's uh, some old pubs and clubs it was a very wealthy town at one stage because of the gold rush but it then fell into disrepute and on the days when there is the clunes book town you have people doing sausage sizzles on the main street there are food vans there's incredible weird bits of public artwork which i love and which are definitely not colonial era. But the main street of Clunes this year is not where the action was. The action was actually up the hill towards the town hall, where most of the booksellers were, because the local businesses complained about having everything down in the main drag. There was also this fox, which foxes in Australia are a nuisance animal, so I'm not too unhappy with that. But we saw some really quirky shops selling some uh, retro stuff, we also saw, of course, a lot of books. I didn't buy as many books as I thought I would, which is a bit of a shame. But I didn't find anything that really, really grabbed me. And middle-aged good girl stuck a finger up there. There were a lot of really good um, booksellers there and books, particularly the second-hand ones. Most of them were, were things I either had or didn't want. There's more of the public artwork there. There's the kangaroos, which may be evidence that we're actually living in a simulation and not in a reality. But the public artwork of that type is always there every year at Clunes, and it looks great. Now, here is my good friend Chuck McKenzie with his stall where he's selling his books. Chuck's a lovely guy, and his two books, Conversations with My Cat, and the other one, which I've forgotten the name of the book. It just came up on the screen. Uh, there's Chuck there. He's, he's a great guy. We love Chuck. There's that picture of his cat. He was in one of the tents up the hill selling his books. Then we went to the $5 bookshop just on the edge of town, which is in an old Department of Mines building, a heritage-listed old building, and every book there was $5, and that's where I got my three movie books. I could have bought a lot more, but they were cash only, and I didn't want to use up all the cash we had. These ones, they always show up at the, at the $5 bookshop, and they're fantastic. Things like Film Annual 1957. 100 pages of pictures and stories of the stars. Now, this I found this very interesting because I was browsing through this one and I found a very interesting article there about George Nader, an actor from the 1950s. And the cool thing is, it says there, a bachelor gay, that's George Nader. And indeed, he was gay. His career ended in America because he wouldn't pretend to be straight and he loved his partner so he went to Europe and made a whole bunch of movies in Europe including the Jerry Cotton um, action films but I found that really interesting and these books are historical documents as much as anything else on the back you got a picture of Tony Curtis Th yeah these ones are just uh, great to dive into and also I find out about movies I didn't know about old hidden gem movies that I might want to do on the channel turn up in these books surprisingly often here's film review by f morris speed another one anthony perkins on the back another closeted fella this one as well lots of longer articles about movies and and big color pictures of people like william holden it's great and the condition these things are in there 1957 that's like 67 years old this year but it's in great condition and there's all these little bits and pieces about various movies in it which i totally love the third one is kind of cute picture show annual for people who go to the pictures 
And I found that there's an article about horror movies in this one. This one has blue tinted pages and it looks a little bit odd. But I kind of like that. And on the back, apparently there was a magazine called Picture Show. And there's an ad for the English magazine Picture Show on the back. Which is so wonderfully 1950s retro. What year is this one? I've got to scroll through and find it. I think it's about 1956, 1957. 1958, I was wrong. That one from 1958. These are a wonderful artifacts, and I got them for $5 each. And I've got a number of these kind of books, and I just like browsing through them and seeing how movies were seen by the public and by promotional magazines at the time. There's a lot of PR fluff in these, and the PR fluff is very often interesting given the subsequent histories of these actors. So that's the first part of what I'm talking about, clunes and the stuff that I've got at clunes. By the way, before I finish with clunes, our good friend Liddy Cameron also had a store there for her bookshop, Clandestine Books. It's actually a book publisher, but she had a table there selling books. They do science fiction and horror and crime books. And I'll post a link to both Chuck and clandestine press in the show notes for this video so we, next thing i'm going to go on to is an australian movie streaming service called broly which is run by umbrella entertainment who have been a big supporters of this channel and i thought i'd go through what broly has available and at the end of this i'm going to tell you how to get access to it even if you don't live in australia and for free you do it for free you can do a paid way around this but there is a way for you to see broly even if you live in another country. There are tons and tons of particularly cult movies and Australian-oriented movies on Broly's streaming site. I mean, there are things like Center Spread here, which is a science fiction fashion movie from 1981, an Australian one, with Kylie Foster and Paul Traher in it, directed by Tony Patterson. Look at this on a Blu-ray in a double feature with Felicity, which is another one of those titillating 1980s Australian films. We also have Dagon, Stuart Gordon's really fine adaptation of one of H.P. Lovecraft's stories. And that one is a really great film. I've talked about it before. And a lot of these films have been released by Umbrella on physical media. But they're also on Broly, which is fantastic. This one's a high recommend for me. It is creepy as hell. Lots of good physical special effects and also a little bit of computer special effects. Dagon, if you haven't got a copy of it or haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. Then we've got Exploitation with Death Cheaters, uh, starring John Hargreaves and Grant Page, who just died recently, unfortunately. The stuntman, stuntman of the Exploitation era here in Australia, Grant Page. And Death Cheaters is a movie that Brian Trenchard Smith put together so that he could do the stunts that he and Grant Page wanted to do. It's an absurd story about a couple of ex-soldiers who do stunt work for television and get hired by the Australian government to raid the island stronghold of a Filipino racketeer and secure papers from his safe. It's a mad film and it's a so wonderfully 1970s exploitation. There are also some obscurities from New Zealand like Death Warmed Up, a horror movie from 1984. I haven't seen this one yet. Knowing that it is a 1980s New Zealand horror movie, there are going to be splatter effects in there. I really want to see this one. But the blurb there just tells you that it's going to be definitely the kind of movie that I'm going to want to see as the weather turns towards winter and the nights get longer and I can curl up on the couch and just watch weird shit on Broly. Then we've got, of course, some adult stuff. In this one, you've got the true story of Eskimo Nil with Max Gillies and Serge Lazarus, directed by Richard Franklin. This one is a real obscurity and it is based on the epic poem Eskimo Nell. You might want to look that one up if you don't know about it. And the supporting cast there is pretty good. It's got Graham Bond who was in Artie Jack and Abigail who was in number 96. Lots of familiar faces from the Ausploitation era and from 1970s and 1980s Australian television. But if you haven't seen the true story of Eskimo Nell, you should give it a go. There's just an overview of some of the horror films that are showing on Broly. You got Circus of Fear with Christopher Lee. You got Deer Skin Killer Style, VFW, The Babadook, which is fantastic, of course. Night of Fear, Next of Kin, Lords of Chaos, Bite, 
Um, Martyrs is there. Now, Martyrs is one of those horror movies that everybody who's seen it says it's a fantastically adept film, but everybody I know who's seen it also says they never want to see it again. It is incredibly confronting. You've got the bloody judge again with Christopher Lee. You've got two of the reanimated movies in it, um, two of the terrifying movies, as well as All Hallows Eve. The third one's coming out soon. The original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Day of the Dead, George Romero, Long Weekend, a classic Australian horror um, exploitation film. You've got Razorback, The Autopsy of Jane Doe, Hellraiser Audition, the really confronting South Korean horror movie, and A Tale of Two Sisters, which you should definitely see. You've got the Australian vampire film Thirst there, and you've got Slumber Party Massacre, which is an interesting feminist take on the slasher film. You've got this one, I Saw the Devil. I've talked about this when I got a physical copy of it for Umbrella. A really confronting serial killer movie from South Korea starring Choi Min-sik and Lee Byung-hoon, directed by Kim Ji-woon. This one is totally balls-to-the-wall horror serial killer film with an incredibly interesting twist to it. You've got Jenna, classic from 1955, directed by Charles and Ilsa Chevelle, starring Nala Kunoth and Robert Todawali. A story of a young indigenous uh, child who is adopted by a, fa a family of white people who run a cattle station in the Northern Territory. And you've got her problems of being between two cultures. Now, this is a very early look at the way that colonisation affected Indigenous Australians. If you haven't seen Jetta, it is kind of naive and a little precious in some ways, but it's an important part of Australia learning to confront our colonial past. Then you've got Not Quite Hollywood on there as well. If you haven't seen Not Quite Hollywood, you really should. Incredible documentary about the Ausploitation era. Tons and tons of interviews, tons and tons of clips, you want to sit down with a pen and paper and just write down the names of things after this. Mark Hartley did a fantastic job documenting the craziness of Australia's exploitation era. It's an important movie. That's a movie you should definitely check out. Then they've got some Eurospy stuff, which surprised me a bit. Our Man in Marrakesh, 1966, starring Tony Randall, Santa Berger, Herbert Lom, directed by Don Sharp. It's also got Klaus Kinski in it. It's one of those uh, American tourists get caught up in spy stuff in Marrakesh. Fantastic location shooting. One of those great, kind of half-forgotten Euro spy movies of the 1960s. And for those of you who like television and family-friendly stuff, you've got Skippy, The Bush Kangaroo, Season 1. And you also got Season 2 on there as well. So you can just binge the slightly silly story of a, a bush kangaroo and the family who live in the National Park. Uh, there are poachers, there are robbers, there are all sorts of people they get involved with. And like Lassie, Skippy has an almost human ability to thwart bad guys. In the um, Indiana Clones genre, Sky Pirates, it's just been released on physical media by Umbrella as well. Fantastic rollicking adventure. Directed by Colin Eggleston, starring Bill Hunter, John Hargreaves, Max Phipps. This one is, is just such fun, and it does give us an Australian kind of Indiana Jones movie. And I would argue it's much better than the latest Indiana Jones film. But Sky Pirates is a wonderful flick. It does a lot with a little, and it is just a joy to sit back and watch the silliness of. This one's Alex Proyas' first film, I think. Alex Proyas, who later went on to do... Dark City and Gods of Egypt. Spirits of the Air, Gremlins and the Clouds. I haven't seen this one yet. I've been told that I should, but given the fact that it is on Broly, I'm definitely going to check it out. I've got a bookmark for myself. Um, sort of science fiction-y, but not quite. But Alex Preuss is an interesting guy. He's also very grumpy. He blocked me on Facebook when I suggested he shouldn't really engage with trolls, and he took that as an insult for some reason and blocked me. Uh, then we've got this one, hell of a recommendation, Stone, 1974, the best biker movie ever made anywhere. Fantastic cast, Hugh Keysburn, Roger Ward, Vincent Gill, Rebecca Gilling, directed by Sandy Harbin. Stone is really a, a gutsy film. If you haven't seen Stone, and you haven't seen the best biker film ever made, forget Easy Rider, forget all the rest, Stone is the movie you need to see. 
Then there's a documentary as well, Sunbury 72, which is about the Sunbury Music Festivals, which went on in the 1970s from 72 to 75, uh, in a semi-rural place just outside Melbourne, which is only about 40 minutes drive from here. And it was kind of like the Australian Woodstock with a whole bunch of local bands. Sunbury 72 is an important documentary for the simple reason that this stuff can be lost if it's not documented. And it's got a whole bunch of great local bands, Lobby Lloyds in there, Max Merritt and the Meteors, Chain, Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs. If you want to get into 1970s Australian rock and roll, Sunbury 72 you should check out. Then there's a lot of Indigenous related movies in there as well, like The Fringe Strollers, directed by Bruce Beresford. That one is quite confronting. And it's one of the first movies, it's from 1986. It's one of those movies that starts opening the conversation up more about the lives of Indigenous Australians in the modern era. We're a very long way from where we should be on this issue. But movies like The Fringe Dwellers were steps in on that path. It came just before the big protests in 1988 in Sydney, when there was the bicentennial of colonisation and there were big festivals on Sydney Harbour. I actually went to the protest march in 88, which was alongside all of those festivities. There was a real groundswell of support for First Nations Australians at the time, which to greater or lesser degrees has continued to this day. We've also got some modern documentaries from 2015, Women He Undressed, which is about Ori Kelly, the Hollywood fashion designer, who was actually an Australian. So it was directed by Gillian Armstrong, and it talks about how Ori Kelly dressed a whole bunch of classic era people in Hollywood and how very few people know that he was actually an Australian guy. Really interesting documentary. I've only seen part of it, but I want to watch the rest of it very soon. And it's good that there are these kinds of documentaries, first off in existence, and second off available on Broly. Then we've got Uncivilized, a 1937 film by the Chevelles, which is kind of an adventure film, but it also talks about Indigenous disadvantage. It was filmed on location, and a lot of Australia's films, particularly from the 1930s, are hard to find, and some of them no longer exist. So if Umbrella are preserving classic films like this with the help of the Australian Film Institute and getting them out to an audience, I'm, I'm very happy about that. I haven't seen Uncivilized, but I think it's great that people can watch it on streaming now. And here's the most watched films on Tubi. You've got the ABCs of Love and Sex Australian Style, which is a Mondo kind of documentary. A really good slice of life film about living in the western suburbs of Sydney in the 70s, the FJ Holden, which was about people living where I grew up, more or less. It wasn't too far away where this was filmed. There's Felicity, which is the Australian version of Emmanuel. Death in Brunswick, hell of a funny comedy set here in Melbourne with Sam Neill and John Clark. Death in Brunswick is hilarious. But the other ones in the most popular films, Showgirls and Santa Spread I've already talked about. We all know Showgirls. Uh, Stones on there. Lake Mungo, a really interesting Australian horror movie. There's the t um, Two Ronnies in Australia, which is the two Ronnies, Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett. There's Kids, which is a, a very confronting drama. It's just been released on physical media by Umbrella as well. The TV adaptation of Frank Herbert's Dune, which is kind of interesting because people are probably watching that because Dune 2 has just come out. We've got Annabella's The Love Witch, which I've talked about on the channel before, which is a lot of fun. Hercules Returns, which is I've, I've talked about again. I've done an unboxing of the Blu-ray release of Hercules Returns. Not quite Hollywood's there. Razorback, The Cannonball Run, the Australian film footage movie The Tunnel, Midnight Spares, which is a comedy crime movie from the 1980s. So yeah, there's, a, there's such a broad range of Australian films here, which Broly has. Now I'm going to tell you how to get Broly, even if you are overseas. What you need to do is, the quick way, the quick and dirty way to do it, is pretty simple. You get the Opera Browser and use that as your portal into this because the opera browser and this is not a sponsored video the opera browser has a vpn built into it there's a little button up in the address bar which says vpn and you click on that and you can tell the browser to tell the world that you are in australia it's one of the options they have there so you do that your browser freezes for about 10 seconds then you're in 
and you can then go to broly.com.au open an account and watch all of these movies on your computer without worrying about the fact that you're living overseas because it is region locked if you don't do this you're not going to be able to see any of the movies if you live in other countries possibly maybe new zealand but nowhere else so that's the quick way to do it. download the opera browser use that use a vpn on that go to broly.com.au and watch the movies you may well have to do it on a computer or a tablet but that's the way in and that's the way i tested the works in fact i'm using opera at the moment to watch american tubi which has things like the whole all the seasons of babylon 5 on it so it's a very common way for people to go around region locked content so i thought i'd just put those two things together going to clint's finding these interesting movie books and all the wonderful stuff that's on broly.com.au for people to enjoy if you're in australia don't worry about using the opera browser you'll be able to access it by just creating an account and enjoy it uh lots of solid content there it does steer towards genre stuff which is not a bad thing it doesn't have any of the really big studios but it has tons and tons of interesting content for you to watch and it doesn't cost anything which is the best part so that's it for this time around Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can also support the channel by becoming a channel member or by becoming one of our wonderful patrons. And thank you again to all of the patrons of the channel at patreon.com slash movies. You guys support the channel enormously and it goes to pay for not only the movies I get, but also goes to pay for the internet connection that I use to get these videos out. So I really, truly appreciate all the Patreon support I get. Next up, I've got the third part of the Fixing the Best Picture Oscars, going from 1969 to the end of the 20th century. So we're doing those very interesting years there. And then, of course, we roll into Science Fiction Saturday once more. So until all of that happens, watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Watch some movies on streaming that you're kind of sneakily getting and enjoying and loving. And I'll catch you next time.